Hi friends and welcome back. Today I'm going to be taking you through a tutorial for how to create an amazing snowflake ballet dancer. This was a super popular print that I did this year and so I figured that it would be fun for me to take you through the process so that you can learn to make one of your own. So for this project, we'll be using my Strathmore Bristol paper, as well as some gouache. And to start, we're going to pencil in a ballerina figure, and I'm going to create her in a stick figure first, and then um, start filling in the details later. So once I start applying the gouache, you'll see that uh, she will no longer be a stick figure. So this is my main figure, and then I'll start building um, more figures surrounding her, um, starting with the tutus and blocking off these oval kind of circular shapes for the tutus and having them all surround that one main ballerina. I'm going to try as hard as I can to make it symmetrical, but obviously, you know, when everything is hand done, you can't really get a perfect mirror image. But um, as you can see, I'm blocking off the tutus first, which are these oval shapes. And then once those are in, then um, it becomes much easier to start adding in the heads and the arms and legs um, and all the details of the figures. My palette is already pre-filled from a previous painting that I did, but I'll list all the, I was going to say ingredients, but the colors as well as the brands of gouache that I'm using in the description below. So right here, I'm filling in the body first with a mixture of Pale Rose Blush by Winsor & Newton with some Permanent White by Holbein. And that's something I like to do with all of my gouache, which is to make it more opaque by mixing it with some white. So let's fill in the top as well as the legs and the feet. And this doesn't have to be too precise or anatomically um, scientific or anything. I really love that feeling of it being kind of childlike and whimsical. So let's do the same thing and we'll do it on all the other bodies. And I'm actually varying the color as well from um, a more mocha color for some of the dancers and some chocolate color. And I really love just celebrating people from different walks of life and ethnicities and everything and having it be a very diverse group. So, you know, we run the gamut from a very peachy, you know, um, skin tone to uh, darker colors of espresso, latte, mocha. I'm getting hungry, clearly. <laughs> so let's finish this section up. All right, so let's get some ashy colored blue and start building in the color for the bodice. And so this is going to be kind of like a heart shape. Um, I always find it very easy to kind of think about it as a heart shape and then everything kind of falls into place quite easily. So let's repeat that same um, technique for all of the dancers since they're all kind of wearing the same costume. They're part of what's known in ballet as a corps de ballet, which is kind of a group of dancers all wearing the same costume and doing the same thing. Um, so these heart shapes will be angry angled or tilted in the direction that the dancer is facing. So let's do that for all of our dancers and move on to the skirts next, which will be that same color but um, lightened with the use of the permanent white. So I mix a lot more white. Um, so it is based on the same color as the top of the of the bodice of the costume, but a much lighter version. And um, I decided since these are going to be snowflakes that I'm going to create these um, hexagonal kind of shapes to kind of make it look a little bit more like a snowflake. Um, and what you can also do is take some of that um, skin tone and mix it um, into the skirt to kind of create the impression of transparency. It's something that's a nice little trick and really easy to do. So let's do that for all of the skirts. Um, and you can see that I'm building in angles um, into the tutu. So that's going to that's gonna come into play later when I start adding the details, which will make these skirts look like uh, snowflakes falling from the sky. And for you guys who are not familiar with the ballet The Nutcracker, this piece is inspired by a choreography in the middle of the ballet where um, the dancers or the ballerinas really take the shape and form of snowflakes. And so they kind of dance around and it just um, has a really beautiful festive and ethereal quality to it. And I look forward to it every year. I'm using that same trick of blending the pre-existing layer of gouache with a top layer that is uh, skin tone. And that's something I love about gouache is that you can reactivate underlying layers by just uh, re-wetting the paint and mixing it with a new color on top. 
So let's move on to the details of the skirt. And for this, I'm using just a plain permanent white. And I'm going to be painting um, these almond shapes. And you could really make it whatever you want. Um, I would really suggest just being creative with this and, you know, finding whatever floats your boat, as they say. And bring in your own creativity and your own style in however you choose to decorate these skirts. I like to think about it kind of like decorating Christmas cookies. Um, so you could, you know, do a hundred different versions and them all be different. And that's part of the charm of it. So for this first one, I'm doing these sort of almond shapes that um, kind of all emanate from the center of the skirt. And I'm going to build in some little lines that will make it feel a little bit more snowflakey. I don't know about you, but this part I find very relaxing because it's kind of like doodling. You're just sort of going with the flow and just creating lines wherever you see some negative space and just filling that in with either lines, um, some dots if you want, um, whatever your heart desires. So that's it for this skirt. And then I'm gonna start doing some variations and making them, you know, different for each um, for each dancer in each costume. So the next one is gonna be more um, sort of leafy-like shapes, um, maybe some more geometric type shapes. So, um, you know, really just varying it, I think will make it look a lot more visually interesting and more intricate. You may need to go over some of these areas more than once in order to make sure that the white is nice and opaque and um, has enough contrast for you to see it. So um, just play it by ear and see how that works out for each individual skirt. And um, if you need to layer multiple times, then you can definitely do that. Now, this part is optional if you don't want to add it, but I've decided to add a little bit more of that darker blue to the tutus to create more contrast. And I think it looks really visually striking to have that, um, that darker blue in there. So that's what I'm going with. It's also kind of like these snowflake details have become like the beadwork in a beautiful costume. And so that's part of what I love about this is that it does a little bit of both. It's, you know, snow, but then it also feels like the beautiful costumes you'd find at the Nutcracker Ballet. So we're taking this same darker blue and using it for the hair next. And I've decided with this that I really love the fact that it has a very limited color palette. So we're using and reusing the same colors throughout. And I think that builds the cohesiveness of the whole thing. So let's take that same dark blue and apply it to all of our dancers in this painting. So to wrap up the whole look, I've also decided to add some line work um, that all kind of emanates from that central dancer in the middle. And that's gonna make the whole thing feel like a giant snowflake. So a good thing to think about here is to think about creating Y shapes. So, um, you know, you have lines that start in the middle and sort of start to emanate outwards in what is like an uppercase Y. And you can add as many or as little dots or um, little spokes coming out of them to make it feel more like, um, you know, the details inside of a snowflake. If you can get it to be symmetrical, that's extra bonus points. A tip here is to think about dividing your paper into quadrants. So think of an imaginary line running through your paper horizontally and vertically um, that connect in the center. Um, and then once you have that, you can add in diagonals and you have a very easy way to create the perfect snowflake. Let's remove some of our pencil markings. And so I'm using a kneaded eraser to do this. You can use whatever eraser you want, but make sure that your paint is completely dry before you attempt this. I would recommend a minimum of an hour uh, before you start to erase your lines, just to make sure you don't smudge anything around. I'm gonna be using a micron pen to add the details of the eyes, which are gonna be these uh, basic U shapes. And if you don't have a micron pen, then you can just simply use gouache um, and a small brush. That'll work equally as well. 
And then last final detail are the lips, which um, are going to be in this beautiful Chinese red color that I have. Uh, any red will work, but I happen to have this one already mixed on my palette, so I'm going to be going with that. And for the lips, it's just a simple dot on each dancer's face. We're keeping it really simple and whimsical here. And we're done! A beautiful snowflake ballerina inspired gouache painting. As always, thank you so much for watching and happy holidays!